What's going on internet? IG back again. And uh, we're looking at Mate, Mate, uh, the Mate desktop of Ubuntu 18.04 Bionic Beaver. Now, if you haven't checked out uh, some of the other reviews in this series, uh, obviously we've, so far, we've looked at our first impressions of the main Ubuntu Bionic Beaver release. We've looked at Kubuntu. Uh, and now I'm particularly excited to dig into Mate. Uh, reason being is because um, there was a few key things that held me back from using Mate in the past. And a couple of those things have been fixed in this long-term support release. So to save you a bit of time, I wasn't that impressed with Ubuntu 18.04, the main release. I'm way more excited about some of the other desktop environments that they've got going on. And, um, and Mate is especially one of those. So there's two key things that I'm really excited for in Ubuntu Mate 18.04. First of all is high pixel density to display support across, um, across the board. Um, it's much more uh, integrated now, which is something I'm really happy to see because basically all modern laptops now have very nice screens on them and uh, it's hard to enjoy those nice screens when you can't get everything to scale properly on the display. So that's one thing that I'm excited about. Um, the other thing that I'm excited about is the fact that they have so many um, layout configurations that are, that are pre-done for you without any um, messing around and it makes things so easy when you're wanting to uh, pick up and use Ubuntu Mate and, uh, and maybe you've already gotten used to a particular um, way that a desktop environment works. You just select which layout you want and it's all set up for you. It's actually pretty gold. So those are the two main standout things that I love about Mate, but let's get into the nitty gritty. Uh, Ubuntu Mate 18.04 Bionic Beaver, let's check it out. So here we are landed inside Ubuntu Mate 18.04. Um, first up, this is gonna be a, a just a breath of nostalgic air for anybody who has, uh, has used Linux for the last, mm, let's just say about 10 years or so. Um, and now what I wanna say out of the gate is I love the level of simple customization that Ubuntu Mate gives you. This is not something that uh, is specifically new to this release, but, um, but before I get dug into just the laundry list of, uh, of changes and updates that they've made to this particular release, I just want to acknowledge the fact that, that you can change so much about how this desktop operates with such a simple, uh, with such a simple click. You jump into the Mate Tweak tool and just by selecting a particular panel layout, you can jump between uh, something that resembles a Mac, something that resembles Windows, something that resembles elementary uh, OS, something that resembles uh, Ubuntu back in its Unity days. Um, there's so much to love here. And the fact that it just, uh, that it, it, it arranges it all for you. Um, and then not only that, you can make your own customizations and save that as a particular preset. So if you like working a particular way during a particular project, it's so easy to jump in here and switch um, and switch panel types. And you don't even have to uh, you don't even have to log in, log out. You get like a live uh, switching over, which I think is amazing. Now the other thing that I will say is that um, now I know there was a little bit of confusion on my Kubuntu review, and again you can jump back and check that out. I'll chuck it up in the cards if you haven't seen it already. But there's a little bit of confusion about what I meant by a heads-up display. A heads-up display is uh, it was something that um, that Unity 7 uh, on the mainline release of Ubuntu made a big deal about, and it was basically if you had a global menu, you could jump in here, you could open up a file manager, for example, you'd have the window, um, you'd have the I guess the the file edit, you know, all that kind of menu up at the top here in the global menu, which is great. But then what you could also do was instead of digging through these menus up here, you could simply hit the alt key and it would give you a heads up display, meaning that if I wanted to, um, I don't know, jump to a specific bookmark or if I knew there was a, a specific uh, command that, or a specific, a specific um, uh, menu item that I wanted to jump to, I could just start typing what it was, for example, preferences, smash enter and it gets you straight there instead of having to navigate through with your mouse. Now, um, back in the day for me, this was like the biggest productivity game changer for me that I had ever seen, especially with video editing using Caden Live. Um, I, I don't know how much time it actually saved me, but it felt like I was being super duper productive. Um, and so that, that in and of itself was enough reason to uh, win me over just from a customization standpoint. The fact that I can come in here, set that up in literally two clicks, uh, that enable a panel layout that I like and enable a heads up display made me a very happy boy.
Um, but that is all pretty superficial stuff. And what we might do is jump back to the default layout, uh, which very much resembles as it was back in GNOME 2. Now I'm not gonna give you a history lesson of Mate and why it exists, but what I will say is that uh, Mate is up to, I think version 1.20.1 maybe. But to confirm some of this and just to go over some of the uh, changes, cause there are so many, it's hard for me to keep track of. I wanna draw your attention to the absolute gold that is written by Mr. Martin Wimpress here in the release notes of uh, Ubuntu Mate 18.04. First of all, I just wanna give him props that this is probably one of the funniest and most entertaining uh, introductions to a release notes that I've ever seen. So that was that was a good time. Um, but once we jump into this, as you can see, Mate Desktop 1.20.1, uh, the biggest changes obviously being around high pixel density displays, um, and which I very much appreciate um, having been running on high pixel density displays myself for quite a while. They've also made a lot of improvements to the file manager, which is, I think is always a welcome improvement. Um, being able to, uh, especially some of the stuff that I really like is being able to do um, bulk file management. So bulk file renaming, you've got easy access to encryption um, using GNU PG. Um, and uh, yeah, and some other stuff there that I'm not really gonna jump into too deeply. Um, Marco, the, uh, the window manager, um, that is, that's got some better uh, hardware acceleration behind it if your graphics card supports it. So that's always fun keeping the graphics stack up to date with what graphics cards are capable of. And, uh, and again, the desktop layouts, we've already touched on those and you can find details about what exactly each of them represent because they do use kind of, um, what's the word, tongue in cheek, some of these. Uh, some of them are very easy to figure out like netbook um, and others are kind of throwbacks to, to what, um, what they might be. Mutiny, for example, being uh, a play on uh, Ubuntu Unity. Anyway, uh, the global menu, I've already touched on that. Um, the indicators, they use the same sort of uniform set of indicators that, uh, that um, previous versions of Ubuntu has and uh, and obviously they're still adding and trying to improve these so that they're more efficient instead of just relying on the ones that come from uh, from GNOME and and, uh, and desktop environments of the past. So I guess we're getting to the point now where even though at one point this was based on GNOME 2.x uh, X series, um, this has advanced enough and they've added enough of, of its own features that it's very much its own beast now. You can't really look at it as this stale, trying to keep this thing alive sort of effort. It is actually its own beast. It's had some features added to it and uh, and it's expanding just as quickly as GNOME 3, KDE Plasma, all of that fun stuff. So they detail some other uh, stuff like the brisk menu, um, as well as window applets, the heads up display I've already touched on, and obviously the power of the Mate tweak tool is always welcome in terms of quickly changing things like the uh, dis uh, the window manager, whether you want to use accelerated um, desktop effects, uh, aka the comp is with all the fancy wobbly windows and that kind of thing, or whether you just want to use something down to earth or adjust your high pixel density display scaling. Um, you can access all of that through Mate tweak, which I think is, again, a fantastic centralized way to customize pretty much anything about this desktop environment. Okay, so that's kind of all of the changes uh, to um, Mate and uh, hence the Ubuntu Mate release. Um, one thing that I will say, and it's just a tiny little minor grab, I, I am in two minds about the fact that sounds are enabled by default. I don't know if you can hear this or not, but there's tiny little pop sounds that, um, that carry on every time you uh, mouse over a selection and every time you click on something in the main menu. Um, and so it is what it is. Um, in some ways it gives a tactile response to what you're mousing over. In other ways it can get a little bit annoying. Very, very simple to turn it off, but I just thought I'd mention it. Uh, in terms of what you have on Mate that you don't get on any other distribution, you get something like the uh, Software Boutique, which um, I'm a big fan of the Software Boutique. I think any time that a, a Linux distribution can highlight the best software that's available to the end user and make it dead simple and easy to understand what software is out there, then the more likely a user is to stick around and use that distribution to its fullest. And so that's why I love the uh, the detailed descriptions that they give of each um, of each application and the fact that all of these are installable at the click of a button, whether they are directly from the repos or whether they're from uh, Snap or Flatpak um, packages. Um, something else that I really uh, appreciate is the fact that they actually list what alternatives, uh, what 
what the uh, mainline equivalent of that particular piece of software would be. So for example, GIMP is obviously going to be an alternative to something like Photoshop. This is just, again, small touches that can really help ease the transition between, uh, between operating systems. So I think it's a nice touch. Um, at this point, I think none of us are under any illusion that um, most people installing and using Linux already know what they're doing, but the fact that they can just make it this much easier and just jump in and install all the software that we're going to end up finding anyway, um, and then obviously modern improvements like Snap and Flatpak help keep those up to date sooner, I'm all for that. Um, so a lot of these are apps I've used before and I can definitely stand behind their recommendations, but just the fact that they've gone to that trouble, and again, I know this isn't necessarily new to Ubuntu 18.04, but it is something that is unique, I believe, to the Mate release of, uh, of Ubuntu. And I think uh, in that sense, they deserve some major props uh, for keeping that as user-friendly and, uh, and polished. Um, as they do. So the other nice option here is that if you are wanting to completely detach yourself from proprietary software and just focus on open source software, there's a handy little checkbox down the bottom here. And it actually gives you the courtesy of explaining the difference between those two. So uh, that is, I think, a great addition as well. So uh, the only other thing is that they do obviously point you in the direction of where to find other software. And also this isn't the only way you can install software on here, just like you can with most other Ubuntu based distributions. They do have the the, uh, the standard software center um, and they've also got the synaptic package manager as well that you can jump in there and do stuff with so if you want to access to more software then that is how you're going to do it so at the end of the day would i recommend this who would i recommend this distribution to and this is where it gets a little bit weird See, I would previously recommend this system to people who were um, maybe a little bit nostalgic or a little bit pessimistic about the future of where different Linux desktop environments were going. Um, nowadays, I would pretty safely recommend this distribution to that audience, of course, but also to people that just want a solid, stable desktop that has a boatload of power features enabled at the, the press of a button. Um, this isn't the sort of thing where, again, and I'm, I'm going to quickly knock on Plasma here for a second, they're getting so much better at this, but, um, but something like Plasma has all the bells and whistles that you could ever want or need, but you'll never ever discover them unless you go digging. Something like the Mate desktop at what the Ubuntu Mate team have done is give you a lot of those power tools and a lot of that customization, a lot of that uh, control, but on a much simpler and easier to understand level. So they take something that is uh, that could be very daunting to the average user and uh, and show them just how much fun you can have customizing uh, Linux and making it work for you. Um, the other thing I will mention is that they do give you the option right over the bat here um, in the welcome screen to uh, either enable or disable telemetry. So you can take that how you will. I'm going to send telemetry because why not? And uh, and then once you have agreed to that or not, then you obviously get presented with their welcome screen. Now, um, again, this the reason I'm bringing this, this welcome screen up last is because it's a great example of uh, of power tools available to the user and presented in a way that uh, that makes sense. It simply shows you uh, where you can um, get help for just introducing yourself to the distribution. It shows you all the features that Mate has to offer and it gives you quick and easy links to their community, to their chat room, and to their software boutique. Uh, also, the browser selection tool is kind of cool. You guys have seen this kind of thing before, but the fact that you can not only add which browser you want to use, but also remove the default one is uh, is nice. And the inclusion of something like Brave and Vivaldi that are lesser known browsers, but are equally cool is nice to see as well. So basically, I guess if I was to conclude this video in, uh, in a sentence, it would be that Mate is the desktop to use if you are sick of the direction of more modern, stripped back, simple uh, desktop environments and you want power user options at the press of a button. It's a very long sentence, but I think that'll probably do in terms of my best explanation of that. You can kind of see how many resources I'm using as we just idle through this thing. Um, we kind of idle around sort of three, four percent CPU, 800 meg of RAM. It's not the lightest distribution or the desktop environment in the world, um, but it gives you so many great features with the simplicity and the, the streamlineness 
of, uh, of what Linux desktop environments used to be in yesteryear. Um, so there's so much nostalgic love, but also excitement about what kind of features these guys include out of the box that makes Ubuntu Mate and especially this LTS release very, very compelling. Well, that'll be all from me. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about Ubuntu Mate. And because we love the comparison game for you, what is the difference? And would you choose Ubuntu Mate over Ubuntu Budgie? Because that is the review that it's going to be coming up next. And I'm curious to hear your guys, you, you guys' thoughts. That came out really weird. Okay, catch you all in the very next video, ladies and gentlemen. Like it if it helped you out. Subscribe if you like this stuff on a regular basis. And I'll see you in the very next video. Peace out.